and welcome to this Meet Plus tutorial. Today, we will explain to you how to, how to use the tool in its Excel version and rural Meet. The first step is to download the tool. We, we recommend downloading the file each time you use it to ensure that you have the latest version. The Excel file that we will be working on today is accessible through this link. When you click it, you end up on this page where, where you can choose the rural Meet Plus. Click on download here and you will get to this page where, where you can choose the language that you want to use. Today, we will focus on the English one and clicking this link will download a um, file with all of this, uh, a folder with all of these files. You will see the Excel files uh, used for the tool, as well as a number of guidance notes um, that you can read if you want additional information on how to use the tool. Today, we will choose the Excel data entry file, which allows us to insert directly into the file. First, a quick overview of the tool before we dive in. I will share with you the general structure, substructure for each activity, and then one quick piece of advice on uh, making the tool easier to use. As you can see, Need Plus is presented as an Excel file with several groups of tabs um, that you can use to fill surveys or questionnaires by activity. We have here the first group for the sensitivity module, the gray tabs. And further, you will see the um, other groups of tabs for the shelter module, wash module, and food security module. Each of those groups of tabs are structured the same. We have an introduction tab, a questionnaire, and a summary. We'll look at these tabs in details. But first, a quick tip to make Need Plus more user-friendly. Go to the Excel toolbar in the formula tab. And then here on calculation option, um, you can find several options. And to choose the manual calculation to disable automatic calculation on Excel. This means that you will need to save for formulas to be calculated and prevents the file from recalculating every time you select an answer in the questionnaires, which makes it much, much faster to use. Now let's get down to business. Let's start by looking in detail at the sensitivity module. This module has one main objective, which is to identify the environmental risks present in a given region. For the time being, it is a general analysis that is not linked to a specific activity or project. When filling in this module, it is important to choose the scope of the study. You want to choose an area that is relatively homogeneous in terms of climate, geography, and vegetation. For example, if you are in a country with a coastal area, which is fairly flat with a lot of rain, and dense vegetation, away a mountainous hinterland, which is drier, has less vegetation. You will need to fill the questionnaire twice for each of those regions. You don't need to split the countries in which you work into lots of tiny areas, but do try to select homogeneous regions so that the tool can give relevant recommendations. One point to note is that no environmental knowledge or skills is needed to fill in this questionnaire. The one thing is that if the person completing the questionnaire is familiar with the chosen region, it makes the process much easier and much faster. Now let's look at each tab in more detail. So first we have the introduction tab, which is very general. You're just filling some information in the blue cells. And if you already have a specific project in mind and you know which activities you're going to implement, you can put it in those cells here. 
Otherwise, if you're filling in this questionnaire outside of a specific project context, go directly to the questionnaire tab. In it, we find groups of multiple choice questions. The first group concerns the population of the area that you are assessing. This tool was originally developed for IDPs or refugee camp projects, and this history is clear in these questions. Don't worry if this is not relevant to your project or if you are filling in the module independently of a project. To this question, what best describes the type of settlement? You can just choose anonymous uh, standalone host community. And then if I save, you will see the tool will calculate to the sake of the while, which is why we recommend uh, deactivating the automatic calculation. Once the calculation is done, you will see that the three questions that we had here on conditions of the camp have disappeared and it is now recommended that you just keep them. So no worries if you're not in a camp situation. And then you fill in each group of questions. So as we said, we've recommended to deactivate the automatic calculation. But do remember, after filling each group, to save your file, which will make Excel calculate next questions and update questions if needed. One quick note. For <clears throat> question on infrastructure as well as natural environment, if you're not sure how to answer, there is additional information on understanding which climate you're in, how to assess the type of land cover, vegetation density, extra, extra, um, so that, as, well, as I said, you don't have to have um, environmental knowledge. You can just use this additional information tab to help you answer those few questions. Once you have answered all the questions, so you see I uh, filled it in, and in advance uh, to go faster, we can go to the summary tab. So in the summary tab, you will see the main, risk, uh, main risks identified. They are classified into issues of high concern, medium concern, and lower concern. At this stage, you can already focus on the issues of high concern to get a good idea of the main risks to keep an eye on. Further down this tab, you will also find additional information for each type of risk, as well as advice on how to mitigate these risks. This is fairly generic advice so far. We have not yet filled any specific information on planned activities, but it can already be useful at the project design stage. And we are done with the environmental sensitivity tab. As you see, you already have recommendations that can be used quite quickly. But now let's go take a look at the activity modules. If you are using the NEED Plus in the context of a project, you will need to fill them in. Their objective is to identify the environmental risks that are specifically re related to a project or activity that you are going to implement. In this case, the scope is that of your project. But be careful, as was the case in the sensitivity questionnaire, depending on the type of project, it may be necessary to fill in several questionnaires. For example, in the shelter case questionnaire, depending on the type of activity, say, if you have an area where you are going to build new shelters, and then another one where you're going to refurbish existing buildings, the environmental risks will be quite different. In this case, for this project, it may be useful to fill in the questionnaire twice. If you have any doubts about this and whether you need to fill in several questionnaires and how to split them, please contact your environment officer. This part of the tool should ideally be completed by a technical specialist and or the project manager familiar with the details of the project in question. Again, no environmental expertise is needed. 
it is the knowledge of the project and activities planned that is important. If we return to the tool, we will take a quick look at the shelter module. The logic is the same as for the sensitivity module. There are only a few points of difference. In the, in the introduction tab, the choice of submodule here is important because it will determine the content of the questionnaire. For example, if I go show you the WASH introduction to, uh, tab, you can see here that so far there is no environmental issues selected. Now, if I complete this uh, few tabs, adding the modules that I will be planning in my project, and then again, save, force Excel into calculating, you will see that now environmental issues have already been selected for the uh, sectors that I have selected. So uh, water and sanitation and water distribution. And in the questionnaire, those questions are have appeared where before we had only um, those please skip these questions mentioned. So if I go back to the shelter module, which I pre-filled, we will see that, as I said, for the, the, the sub-modules that you have selected, you already have simple indications of environmental risks that are directly linked to the type of activity you have selected. Those are available very quickly and can be useful at the beginning of the project cycle. If you don't have the time to fill in the full questionnaire yet, you can already take a quick look at those risks and use them to inform the design of your project. And then, obviously, the better uh, solution is to take a look at the full questionnaire. As I said earlier for the WASH one, um, all the questions relevant to the submodules that we have selected have appeared in the questionnaire. And this is where you can describe your project. So to save time, I've pre-filled all of the uh, answers in this case. And as mentioned before, do remember to fill to save documents after each group of questions. There's nothing else to see on the questionnaire tab. This is where you describe your project. Now in the summary tab, you will now see a longer and more specific list of environmental risks and associated mitigation possibilities. Further down the tab, you also have matrices that are linking the risks that you highlighted um, in your sensitivity module with the, the risks coming from the activity that you are going to implement. And these allow you to identify the key points to watch out. And so this, for each type, each submodule of your um, selected activity, you will notice that you have your um, potential environmental risks classified as high, medium, or low, and below a few mitigation tips that you can already use to, again, inform the way that you design your project to avoid um, those risks that you have now identified. And that's it for the Excel tool. As you can see, it's not a very complicated tool to use. And now you can gather a group of stakeholders to analyze the findings and the recommendations raised by the tools and see together how to integrate them into your project to reduce their environmental impacts. Thank you for your attention, and we hope that this helps you in using the NEED Plus tool.